I want us to read, beginning with the 10th verse. I want to know Christ. How many of y'all want to know him? And the power of his resurrection. What would happen if you knew the power of the resurrection? Then some of your dead dreams will come alive. Your dead marriages will come alive. If you know him in his resurrection. But now watch this. And the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. How many of y'all want that? Oh, wow. I like the resurrection. But he says, I want to also know what it's like to share in his sufferings. Now watch this. Becoming like him in his death. And what will happen if I'm like him in his death? And so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now what is he talking about the resurrection from the dead? I don't believe he's talking about a physical resurrection here because he's talking, here's a, a man who is alive on the planet and he's saying, I want to attain to the resurrection of the dead. Well, you can't attain to the resurrection physically unless you're dead. Because those who are alive and the Lord comes, we are raptured, we're not resurrected. So you have two groups of Christians, those who are dead in Christ, who are resurrected, and those who are alive that are not resurrected. See, he's talking about resurrection power. He's talking about God turning dark moments like the cross into a bright moment like Sunday morning when Jesus rose from the dead. Now, I have heard great sermons, and maybe you have too, great sermons where people take the crucifixion as an example and how, like Christ, we go through dark moments. We go through our own Fridays. But, like Christ, we should not give up because Sunday's going to come. You understand? Now, how many of y'all have heard good sermons like that? All right, you've heard it from me. You've heard it from others. And I'll never forget the first time I ever heard someone use this. Because when, when, when I thought of the resurrection, I purely saw it as Christ's resurrection. And I never put it together that this is a great example of our own lives. Well, I've heard great sermons, but the first time I heard it was from Tony Campolo. And he had a, a popular, in fact, it was a best-selling DVD at the time when I was a young pastor. It was called, uh, no, well, it was, it's, it, it's Friday, but Sundays are coming. What a great title. It's Friday, but Sundays are coming. Ever since he preached it, a lot of pastors picked up on it, saying it's Friday, Sundays are coming. And uh, wow, when I heard that sermon, man, I got wired up, and, and I never saw Easter in the same light. So every time I've approached dark moments in my life, I always remind myself it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Now, now, all right, are you ready to go on a higher level, though? Because I, I, I have seen Christians went through some dark moments, and they're hoping, I just got to hang in there. But you know what? They're still hanging on there. And I've seen it. And I've wondered, how come... Sunday didn't come for them. They still didn't get healed. They still didn't prosper. Their churches still didn't change the world. Why didn't it work for them? And it bothered me. And I, I preached the, just to you all, trying to give you hope that hang in there. And then the Lord began to deal with me on this passage. Do you see what he is saying? Now watch this. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Now watch this. So, what this? Becoming, what does it say? Becoming like him in his death. That, that if I become like him in his death, then I'll be like him in his resurrection. Are you with me? It's not automatic. In other words, I'm not going to have Sunday if I don't die like Christ, he, like he died on Friday. It's because, listen, 
On Sunday morning, Jesus rose from the dead, but that thief on the cross, he still, his body was still in the tomb because he did not become like Christ in his death. Do you see this? And I started to see that the reason why Sunday doesn't come for a lot of folks is because they haven't become like Christ in their suffering. They haven't shared in their suffering the way Christ suffered. They suffer differently than the way Christ suffered. And if you suffer differently than the way Christ suffered, what makes you think you're ready for the resurrection like Christ resurrected? See, I have no power. See, Jesus had no power when he was dead. He had to depend on the Father to resurrect him. But he had all the power on how he was going to suffer. Do you see this? And we don't have the power to resurrect our marriage and to resurrect our dead dreams and to resurrect our family and to resurrect our ministry. But we do have the power to become like him in his suffering and in his death. So the Lord began to tell me, he says, son, the reason why many don't experience the turnaround is because they don't suffer the way my son suffered. So as I began to meditate on it, it hit me. We need to suffer the way he suffered. Are you with me? So as I began to look at the cross, it starts off with Jesus carrying his cross. Now watch this. And he falls, and the Bible says they got Simon to take up the cross and pick it up for him. And it hit me that the first thing we need when we're suffering is we do not attempt to suffer alone. We need help from other people. Do you see this? Jesus didn't say, hey, 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 I'll handle it, Simon. I'll do it alone. I don't need your help. I'm going to carry the cross by myself. I don't need anyone to help me. But Christ needed help. And I have seen people become stubborn in their suffering. Leave me alone. Don't tell me how I should raise my kids. Don't tell me how I should fix my marriage. I'll handle this. Don't tell me about my drug addiction, my alcohol abuse. I'll stop it when I'm ready. I don't need anyone to help me. Do you see this? And the Lord began to show me that we need to humble ourselves. And when we're going through suffering, we need to say, I need a Simon to help me. Pick up this cross and carry it. I know a couple, a wonderful, sweet couple. And I reached out my hand to help this couple going through incredible pain. And I'll never forget it. This sweet couple spurned me and basically stay out of our business, Pastor. Today they're divorced. Yet I reached out my hand. I was wanting to be the Simon to help carry the cross for them and I've seen many people and maybe you're like that where you are going through a, an incredible difficult moment in your life and a Simon comes to your side and says let me help you and in pride I'll do it alone stay out of my business I'll handle this problem by myself I don't need marriage counseling. I don't need prayer. Just stay out of my business. You're not going to get a resurrection. Because how can, you suffer? how can you expect the resurrection of our Lord if you don't want to do what our Lord did? And the very first thing he did is, I need help to carry this cross. 